Hi, in the second video of this series, I'm going to use a vertical mill to cut out a rectangle for the LCD screen and bezel. If you're not already familiar with what a vertical mill is, it's used for a lot of different X, Y, and Z axis cutting operations. And of course, one of these operations is using an end mill bit to cut side to side for knocking out rectangles. The material that you're cutting into has to be mounted on the table, and then the table is moved along the X and Y axis manually using these hand wheels. A measurement gauge on the shaft behind both hand wheels can be zeroed out before cutting so that precise lengths can be measured. One full turn of the wheel is equal to 1 16th of an inch cutting distance, and the smallest tick marks on the gauge are every thousandths of an inch. A standard sheet of printer paper is about three thousandths of an inch, so moving the wheel three tick marks is equivalent to making a cut only as wide as a sheet of paper. The table has T-slots, so I can use these step blocks and clamps to secure the enclosure to the table. I need to align the enclosure perfectly on the table to get cuts that are parallel to the edge of the enclosure. The easy way for me to do this is just to align the bottom of the enclosure with the edge of the table. With larger pieces it's not that simple, but luckily most pedal enclosures are small enough to do it like this. The data sheets for the enclosure and the bezel give me all the dimensions of each piece. From that, I do some straightforward calculations for centering the bezel on the enclosure, and then I convert the calculations into a precise number of full turns and additional ticks. The first operation is to locate the position for making the plunge cut. I move the bit as close as I can to the bottom of the enclosure. Using a piece of paper between them, I move the enclosure closer to the bit until the paper is grabbed. Then I raise the bit, zero out the measurement gauge, and perform the specified number of turns. According to my calculations, I need to move the bit 29 full turns from the bottom of the enclosure, plus 43 tick marks. Now that the Y position is set, I lock the Y axis into place and repeat a similar series of steps for the X axis. I need to move the wheel 13 full turns and 47 hash marks. For safety, I wear eye protection, ear protection, and I have no articles of loose clothing. Now I lock the x-axis into place and perform the plunge cut. Once the bit has reached the desired depth, which in this case is all the way through the enclosure, lock the z-axis into place. Having zeroed out the measurement guide, I can now perform the lengthwise cut. A small amount of WD-40 will help the cutting go a little smoother, and it also helps keep chips from flying everywhere. The length of the cut for the bezel is 49 full turns and 39 tick marks. Once that length is reached, I lock the x-axis down. With the measurement guide zeroed for the y-axis, I perform the cut for the height of the bezel. The length of this cut is 17 full turns plus 37 tick marks. Once that length is reached, I lock the y-axis down. Now I need to cut in the opposite direction along the x-axis. To do that, I first have to eliminate the play that always exists in the table. This play is called backlash, and it always happens when the screw reverses direction. Then I follow the same process for the y-axis. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but the bezel has these two little nubs, which secure and center it to an enclosure. I need to create two notches to accommodate these nubs. First I eliminate the backlash as I reverse direction on the y-axis. Then I do 8 full turns plus 55 tick marks.
the notch gets created with two full turns on the x-axis. Then I reverse direction and travel 51 full turns plus 39 tick marks. If the mill meets the enclosure at precisely that amount of turns, it's a great indication that everything's gone well. Then two more turns to make the second notch. Now at this point everything should be done. I always test fit the piece before removing the enclosure from the table. If anything needs to be corrected, it's much easier to do it now instead of later. It'll take me a couple days to complete the cutout in all 25 enclosures. This isn't a process that's wise to rush through. It requires full concentration. Once I'm done, I'll start working on the powder coat finishes. I hope you'll join me next time for that.